This is Exequias Trivulides for knowledge from the past. Our subject today is the mummy of Agamemnon. Why do they hide the truth? Between 1580 and 1200, before the Common Era, with conventional dating, has flourished in today's Hellenic territory, but also outside it, a great civilization that has prevailed nowadays to be called Messenian, since its most important center was the city of Messina in Argolida. This was the Achaean culture that Homer talks about in both his epics, the Iliad and the Odyssey. Messenians, Achaeans, heroes, were therefore both Odysseus, Achilles, and Agamemnon, as well as Hector, Aeneas, and Paris Alexander, since they were also Achaeans of the Asia Minor area. One of the greatest names of the people of the Greek Achaeans was also the well praised by some many poets, Agamemnon. This great king of Messina was the most important of the Pelopidian dynasty, who had taken over the rule of Messina after the Presidians. The founder of the dynasty was Pelopas, then Atreus reigned, and after his, de his death, Thyestes took over. When Thyestes died, the kingdom of Messina was not taken over by the son of Thyestes, by Agamemnon, the brother of Thyestes, because this was the custom of succession at the royal throne of Messina in ancient times. Iliad 2, verse 102. Pelops gave to Atreus the scepter, the army chief. When Atreus died, he left the, the heritage to Thyestes with many herds of lambs. And then he, that is Thyestes, left it to Agamemnon to bring it to many islands of the, and to ring throughout Argos. Agamemnon had 100 ships to campaign against Troy and 60 gave to, to the Arcadians who did not have any, according to the list of ships which Homer preserved to us. Generally, from the epic poetry, Agamemnon emerges as the first among all the Achaeans that one with overwhelming view, the chief and commander in the war of Troy. After the fall of the city, the Achaeans winners, mainly from Greece, return to their homes. Agamemnon is also admitted to Messina with honors of a hero, but not by all, since his wife Clytemistra and her lover Aegisthus murdered him in the place, in the palace. The killers have been ringed for seven years, but Orestes, the son of Agamemnon, takes revenge by killing both, with his sister Electra urging him to do so. The Pelopidian dynasty ends in 1120 before the Common Era, upon the return of Heraclides and the takeover of the leadership throughout Greece by them. Every great, great dead hero in history is accompanied by a legend. Everyone is looking his tomb, his tomb as the ultimate contact point, as the last page of the book of a glorious life. So it happened with Agamemnon, and the one who was going to turn this page was no other but Henry Schliemann. He was born on January 6th, 1822 in Germany, and died at the age of 68 on December 26th, 1890 in Naples, Italy. His dream was to become an archeologist and scholar of classical text, but this was stopped when his father, a priest, was accused of misuse of money. Thus, while studying in a private school for classical studies, it never happened because he could no longer pay. So he left the school and went to work in a grocery store. His only pleasure at work, as he later said, was his friendship with an employee who could recite 100 verses from the Homeric text in ancient Greek. As he wrote, from that moment, I did not cease to pray God to allow me to learn Greek at some point. In 1842, 
he worked in Prussia in an accounting firm. From then on, come to him the idea of getting rich to realize his great dreams. He spends no money ex except for his education. In two years, he learned English, French, Italian, and Portuguese on his own. That was his passion. In summer of 1868, he arrived in Greece, and specifically in Ithaca, because he was now identified with his hero, Odysseus. Excavations began with small results. He then excavates in Troy, and in August 1876, he begins excavations in Messina. It starts at the Lion, Lion's Gate and then enters the funerary circle A. There is also, there also, he made the great discovery, the mummy of Agamemnon, as he called. When the excavation began in burial circle A, the site was covered uh, with, on, to the height of uh, nine and a half meters. In this thick layer of embankments, there were a mixture of bones from previous burials, animal bones, and many broken pieces of pottery shells. Below this volume of land, at the end, were the vertical graves of which we're now talking with so much admiration. The tombs have dimensions of three to three and a half by four and a half to 640 meters, and the depth that reaches to all, about four meters. Within these six graves, 19 skeletons were found, of which eight belonged to men, nine to women, two to small children. The most important dead man, however, was the dead man of the tomb number five, the one called by Henrik Schliemann Agamemnon. The surprise was enormous. When lifting the now known golden mask, discovered that the dead was embalmed, he was a mummy. It's worthwhile to quote the, the expert in which uh, Schliemann himself recounts the incident of finding the deceased. The round face with all its flesh was preserved wonderfully under the heavy golden visor. There was no trace of hair, but the two eyes were perfect, just like the mouth, which because of the enormous weight it had received it was wide open, revealing 32 beautiful teeth. All doctors who came to see the deceased concluded from the teeth that this man must have died at the young age of 35. The nose had completely disappeared. With a comment later on, in a statement in the Greek press, he states, the dead respond fully to the image that my fantasy for the mighty Agamemnon has long ago made. The news travel fast. People are thrilled. The dead Agamemnon, the legendary king of Messina, was found. A wave of excitement spread all over Greece. In the face of discovery, but very, in the face of discovery, but very quickly to the entire world, thousands of people flocked to Messina to see the miracle. Nevertheless, there is a problem. Let us not forget that we're still in the beginning of the archaeological research. How will he will preserve the king's mummy just out of the spoils? There was a fear that if they did not watch over the body, that it could fall apart in pieces. Then Schliemann telegrams to Nafplion asking a painter to become an oil, to be, to, to make an oil painting of the mummy first. He again points out, so I'm able to give a faithful description of the body, as it seemed after removing all the gold jewels that covered it. Eventually, that exactly, that's exactly what happens. The painter, of whom we unfortunately do not know his name, draws the mummy of the dead king, which was also the model of woodcuts that was published in the album of the Messina, Messinian treasure and excavation of Schliemann. It has been made of hard cardboard with a length of 58 and a half centimeters and width of 38.2 centimeters and depicts the dead in dying, he died in a dyed brown tones on a pale brownish yellow depth. But Schliemann does not rest. Now he wants to save, if possible, the mummy. 
from the eventual destruction. As the body was exposed for two days, a pharmacist from Argos called Spiridon Nicholas solidified it by pouring alcohol in it, dissolving a kind of natural glue, gum sandarac. In this way, the body of the man whom Schliemann identified with Agamemnon was rescued. Where is the mummy today? Here are the questions. After the rescue, even this rough way, what happened to the body of the dead? Where is it today? Here again, the excavator himself helps us uh, when his footnotes from the Messinian album recognizes the contribution of the Archaeological Society of Athens to the rescue work and thanks, because they had undertaken all the work and costs of solidifying the body and removal from the tomb to his transfer to Athens. So we know that the body was moved to Athens. Since there can we be more secure uh, source for a more secure source for it than Schliemann himself. And here comes a version in the Ministry of Culture of Greece and the Ministry of Culture of German Democratic Republic in the 1900s to further clarify the mystery. They refer to page 119 of the tribute title Troy, Messina, Tyrins, or Homenos as follows. Then the body was removed with enough difficulty and moved to Athens and is preserved and kept in the National Archaeological Museum. Here the question the raise are many and they need immediate answers from the officials. Why have we never learned about the mummy of Agamemnon? Why is it not exposed to a museum room today? Are there no halls or rooms? Or is considered a minor exhibit? What happens, ladies and gentlemen, responsible archaeologists of the National Archaeological Museum of Athens? If the body had been sheltered in the museum in 1990s, should it not be kept until today? If that's not the case, then responsibilities should be demanded. Today, we come to reveal this fact and to demand, in the name of the national interest and the historical responsibility that this museum also carries, to finally bring to light and to expose the body of this legendary Messenian immediately. Even if he is not the Agamemnon, as perhaps Schliemann romantic nature may have mistakenly identified him, he is still an ancestral deceased, and indeed embalmed great ancestor from the depths of our historical tradition, since the place that he was buried was considered a double sacred sanctuary and was surrounded by a wall, an interior of the burial circle A, an exterior of the Cyclopean Messenian wall itself. In this way, the burial circle A and all the prominent dead buried and it became part of the city and the palace of Messenians in order to protect the heroized after-death ancestors for their living descendants. So we have to do with, it, with one of the most important personalities of ancient prehistoric Hellenism, a mythical figure perhaps, Agamemnon or Perseus, Evrymedon, or even this leader of Pelopids, Pelopas himself. In front of this revealing reality, as it all appears, we hope to be mistaken, the body of this honored ancestor is most likely to be forgotten today in a moldy and sunless basement, since nothing and nowhere in the National Archaeological Museum of Athens does refer to this remarkable relic. After this publication, this must now be a panhellenic and global requirement, a national imperative. Bring to the Hellenic bright light the sacred dead of Hellenes. Do not deprive us at last our history. After Schliemann's death in Italy, his body came back to Athens. His funeral, funeral took place on January 4th, 1891 and was buried in the cemetery south of Ilissos, at the first cemetery in Athens, in a mausoleum he had built for himself. So let the soil that covers it be light, and let us all understand 
responsible according to the laws, that the protection of archaeological monuments and treasures cannot be imposed only by legal procedures and fancy titles. Most of the times, as a show, nor with the legal separation of Greek citizens to experts and non-experts, but it needs popular participation and deep awareness of the need to protect the heritage that our forefathers gave us. How much recognition of those ancestors is, in, is needed, especially the ones when fate plays such games and delivers the body to our hands after three and a half thousand years or so? So let us worship our dead and give them the prize that suits them. And we'll emphasize it once again to make it even better understood. Let some people understand before it's too late for them that our culture and our national heritage are not the property of anyone. There is no exclusivity of any patron, a ruler over it. Finally, it's not the property to any competent dictator. Respect our history. <laughs>